my friend and sister Sharon, and today I wanted to take my time to share my testimony, how I met Jesus Christ, and the price that I have paid, my friends, has been actually my entire life. Many people don't realize that I can't speak for other people on YouTube and Periscope and other social media's uh, outlets, but Jesus sent me to YouTube. I have been walking with Jesus since I was 21 years old. I will be 50 years old next month. And many of you have asked me to share my testimony uh, maybe a half a year ago, but I've been kind of waiting it out. I believe some things we will share it with you through inspiration, but we shouldn't do much without the leading of the Spirit. And this is how I have learned to live my life. Um, people, uh, you know... We don't realize that what we're doing, or shall I speak for myself, this YouTube channel is serious. It's not a game. It's not a joke. It's not something that I thought of on my own because anyone that knows me personally and have known me in my latter walk with God, I had nothing to do with social media whatsoever. I live a very, very simple life, my friends. I've been through what many of us call the wilderness, the desert, where Jesus led me into this wilderness after owning a very thriving salon business. I had just purchased a brand new home in 2001, and Jesus kept tugging on my heart to give everything up. I had just purchased this home. And I had several cars. I actually had a couple. I had two. I had two cars out in my name. I had excellent credit. I had lots of friends. <laughs> you know, when Jesus started, when I say friends, I mean pretty much associates because by that time I was so, I just, I just wanted to know Jesus. I wanted to know who God the Father was. So when I met Jesus, I was 21 years old. My family, we had never uh, been taken to church by my mother. She was a single parent. I have a twin sister. We are not identical. We're fraternal twins. Um, and I have a, a sister who's one year older than myself. We were a very poor uh, family. I remember I shared on uh, one of the videos how we were so poor, you know, we, we had to borrow water to uh, just take baths in the wintertime because my mother was so, you know, she was just, she didn't have money. She's a single mom and it was rough, friends. And I remember being really um, a very shy child, um, very reserved. Um, I was not um, a very expressive child at all. And my twin sister, for some reason, me and her just never got along. Um, when I was like four, five, and six years old, they used to beat me up, my older sister and my twin. Um, even though I was bigger than my twin, um, I was a very timid child. And I remember as I got older, how my mother, you know, many times she would embarrass me uh, in front of my siblings. I was, I was, Probably, probably what most would consider the black sheep of my family. I was very, um, just a, a very um, timid child. I had been molested three times by different perpetrators. Um, one was a man that came to our slum uh, lord's house where we lived to fix the door. And because I didn't have any relationship with my mother, I didn't have nobody to talk to ever. I was always in my own head. You know, you're you're just in your own space. And, you know, um, I didn't have nowhere to put all this. And I remember stealing my mother's cigarettes. She smoked Winston's uh, 100s, and I used to steal those cigarettes. So by the time I met Jesus at 21, I was a very, um, very angry young woman. I had so much bottled up inside. I didn't know what to do with what these people had done to me, touching me. And, you know, I was not outgoing in high school at all. 
and my twin sister was. I remember, too, I, I must have been 14 or 15 years old. All I remember is just knowing that God was real. My mother, even though we were really poor, she received some type of vouchers, and she put me and my sisters in Catholic school. And I remember them telling us the story about Jesus, that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. I'll never forget it. It stayed with me. And even though we didn't really practice Catholicism, they just gave out vouchers to low-income family. So my mother, she was not religious. She put us in there. There was never, ever one time that I could remember that there was a Bible in our home. Never. My mother took a, never took us to church. We knew nothing about God, nothing at all. So by the time I turned 14 or 15 years old, I remember just, you know, remembering who Jesus was. It always stayed with me that he was the son of God. And when I turned 18, 19 years old, things got really tumultuous between me, myself and my mother. My twin sister and my older sister moved and went, both of them went into the military. I was not going to the military. <laughs> and I was the only one left at home. And my mother, um, at the time, God bless her soul, she just didn't know any better. But my mother, she she would just pick fights with me. I was so oppressed by my relationship with my mother. I didn't know what to do with that either. And we talked about these things. So uh, my mom's not, um, you know, that, that person she was then, she didn't know. But it affected me deeply. And when I turned 18 years old, uh, we got into a really bad fight. Well, actually, we didn't get into a fight. She beat me up. <laughs> I was 18 years old and I used to go to this local skating rink. And so I remember I was getting ready. I was in uh, taking a bath, getting ready to get ready to go. And I don't know what was going on with her, but yeah, she, she got in that bathtub and jumped on me and I was broken. Um, I remember I worked a temporary job. I was 18 and I was working as a secretary because I graduated from high school as a legal secretary with that certificate. So I remember going to work the next day and I was just sitting at my desk and I just broke out. I just, I just broke in tears. I was so broken. Uh, what my mother had done to me. I had already been, you know, all those years just suppressed and picked on with my sisters and um, both of them would get jobs and I didn't have jobs. They would never give me no money. It was horrible. I mean, I was just... Uh... So by the time I came to the age of 20, I was living on my own in this one bedroom apartment after my mom jumped on me. I, I immediately start trying to find work so I could get out of the house and find my own place, which by the grace of God, I did. And it was in that one bedroom apartment. I will never forget. I was walking to work. I had to walk. I had to catch the bus, which was like a 45 minute ride from where I lived to downtown Cleveland. And I will never, ever forget my friend. I was so afraid because it would it would be like 6 30 in the morning pitch black and I would be just afraid to walk down this street to get to the bus and I remember asking Jesus I would say Jesus would you please don't let nobody attack me or hurt me and I remember just it, it just it just came natural to talk to Jesus but I was not yet um fully aware of my sin nature and this would come a couple of years later, uh, actually maybe a year or two later, um, I was dealing with this young man and I always believed in sexual purity. I believe that we should just, you know, keep our bodies till we were married. I don't know where I got this from, but I always wanted to be a virgin till I was married. So I had these values and these were just things I wanted to do. My Both my sisters were very promiscuous. I was very, it's just... I, it's just things I I just didn't want to do that route. And I remember I got involved with this man. And by the time, young man, by the time uh, I met Christ, I was brokenhearted from giving myself to this young man. And I was just so broken because that was one of my personal values. I didn't want to share my body till I was married. And I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't a follower of Jesus, but this was my value. And so when I found out that this young man was cheating on me, I was broken. And I ended up, I'll never forget it, my friends. All this time now, I'm, I'm thinking about Jesus and I feel that Jesus has been really close to me. I can't explain it. But I would think about him every day. Jesus Christ, Jesus, the Son of God. 
But this day, a friend of mine called me, Be, watch out for the bearers of the bad news. My girlfriend called me and said, you know, she told me that the guy that I was involved with had just spent the evening with a rendezvous with her cousin. And I was broken. And I remember going into my bedroom, my one bedroom, and I cried out to God. It was so much that I was carrying up to that point, but that is what kind of tipped me over because I just wanted love. And I remember asking God, please, if you're real, please help me. I don't want to love or have these feelings for another human being. I mean, I was just so broken, friends. And I will never forget when I got up off the floor because I was on the floor. And I was just so broken. I had never cried like this before. I mean, I was broken. And that became the defining moment of my life with Christ. And from that day, I began, I was so aware that I was a sinner. From that day forward to the, this moment that I'm on this camera, I began walking with Jesus. I began to hear the voice of God. I didn't know it was his voice, but immediately after I got up off that floor, my life changed. And I knew that I could no longer be provocative. I was dressing very sexual, wearing very tight, revealing clothing. My thing was them tight jeans. Oh, I was wearing my tight jeans and I was wearing my mini skirts and my stilettos. I was, I was a little seductress and immediately I changed my wardrobe. I felt naked. I felt like eyes were on me. I was smoking two packs of Newports a day. Immediately I knew I had to stop smoking those cigarettes. And where I used to frequent, I used to go to this public skating rink where we all met men. It was a meeting place. I God just stopped it all. And the Holy Spirit immediately led me to go and become baptized, to get baptized in the name of Jesus. I went and got baptized. The Holy Spirit, now keep in mind, up to this point, I didn't know anything about reading or studying the Bible um, because it was never in my home and no one had ever encouraged me. Now, by this time, I'm doing hair out of this apartment that I live in. That was the beginning of my career as a salon owner. I had a steady clientele. And I, and I remember, friends, the one thing I kept thinking after I met Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God started leading my life, I kept asking myself, why didn't any of my customers, and I had a full clientele, I would say 85% of them were churchgoers. Not one of them ever told me anything about Jesus, about God, about sin, about repentance, about eternal life. And I remember for a long time in my walk with Jesus, I wanted to know why. God, why didn't these, these women tell me about Jesus? Why didn't any of these sisters that kept coming to, to, to me to do their hair that went to church every Sunday? How come no one told me about Jesus and eternal life? And God would later answer me, friends. And that's part of what I now am commissioned to teach on this channel. They were all religious. None of them knew Jesus. They were just churchgoers. All the pain, all the sin I was in, no one ever challenged me. And, and, you know, when you come to get your hair done, you got time because, you know, I got to shampoo it. I got to blow dry it. Then it takes me another 30, 40 minutes to flat iron it, style it. No one ever told me about my Lord. And I began that journey, friends. And the Holy Spirit gave me a love for meditation and quietness. Even though, you know, a lot of us that are teachers and exhorters for Christ, we may be talkative to people. But when we're alone, I spent, I didn't realize, but Holy Spirit taught me to love quietness and being by myself. And this is what began, is what began my journey of loving the word of God and loving Jesus. See, the Holy Spirit was talking to me long before I ever picked up a Bible. He was sanctifying me. It was him that put that, that thought that I was naked, the way I was dressed, and to immediately change that, to stop smoking cigarettes, go get baptized in the name of Jesus, get the Bible. All these things is coming to my thoughts. Never saw it in the Bible. Never had anyone preach or teach to me anything about Jesus or the Holy Spirit. The, the voice... He was with me. 
And all of these 28, 29 years I've been walking with Jesus, friend, he walked me through the, the organized church. Before I start going to church, I had already started seeing in the Bible that we should prophesy. We should lay hands on the sick. We should cast out devils. These are things, friends, that the Holy Spirit started teaching me from my times in the scripture. He taught me, you must hate sin. You must get rid of sin in your life. It was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus the great shepherd teaching me the kingdom. And when I started going to church, this is where my relationship with Jesus for a season, it changed. Why? Because of the things that I'm now commissioned to warn you about on this channel. Jesus never called us to, to follow the church. He said, follow me. And this is where, my friends, having your private time of devotion with Jesus will protect you from the devourers because many mortals, they don't know Jesus. They just know church and doctrine. And there are some of you that come and watch my channel every day. You don't know Jesus. I'm sorry, my friends. My job is not to be a preacher or an exhorter. It's to love Jesus. And out of that worship and love for Jesus, he sends us into the harvest to speak about him. And, and, and yes, doctrine, the teachings of the apostles, they, they, they are relevant. But it's Jesus, my friends. If you don't know him personally, none of this means nothing. If you don't follow him, if you believe, you must turn from sin. And this is the only way I know him, friends. He is peace. He has kept me through great trials and traumas and, and, and all types of temptations. Jesus and my love for him and his love for me. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about denominationalism. I'm not talking about a bishop or an apostle or prophet. I'm talking about my Lord. He kept me. He kept me, friends. He kept me through some deep, dark hours. And, and, and I'm talking about some very trying times after he asked me to give up my life. When I left my salon business, friends, it was through personal time with Jesus. I kept feeling I had to let everything go. And for me, I did. I gave up everything. My salon business, my friends, my family, I lost everybody. Because I believe in Jesus. I believe in holiness. I believe that we have an obligation to challenge people who claim that they know him, but they are living wayward. And this is the only way that I have known to tell the truth, to speak up for Jesus, to challenge the status quo. I've never went along to get along since I met Jesus because Jesus, he is, friends, a good shepherd. And I must tell you this as I close my testimony. How I ended up on YouTube, Jesus started giving me an anointing to, to write books. I was never real smart in school, but once I kept walking with Jesus, he, or shall I say God the Father, through Christ being the Lord of the harvest, he is the one that had me write all those books that are all free on my website. And in order for me to do that, friends, I had to give up my own desires and ambitions. And this is how I ended up on this channel, friend. I ended up going through some deep pains, but Jesus was always with me. But I kept what I feel now that I'm teaching you. I had to keep everything that he's taught me. I had to hide it away in my heart as he processed me and cut me and pruned my life. And all I wanted to be is saved. When I die, I just want to meet Jesus. I want to meet God the Father. I want to meet the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's all I want, friends. And this time last year, Jesus stirred me up. I hadn't been in the organized church since I left. Many of the churches in my region all corrupt. They're not teaching about Jesus. They don't teach about repentance and holiness. So I'm not going to be a part of that. But Jesus stirred me and I went to visit this church. This is how I ended up on YouTube. What I'm telling you, friends, this cost me my life. This is not a game and this is not a joke. Because once Jesus took me through deep wilderness and I had to write all those books, that's what he asked me to do. Then... My only desire was just to, to love God and 
I want to go to heaven. And last year, he led me into social media. I wanted nothing to do with it. I believe in personal evangelism. I believe that Jesus, since I met him, he has always given me a love to fish for men. And that's what I teach on the channel. I've been fish, fishing for the souls of men since I met Jesus. And that's all I was doing till last year. I went to this church. It was so corrupt. It was, it, I was so vexed. I didn't know what to do with myself. And I had just bought a new cell phone. And I was inspired to do a, a rant on this video. And that's how I ended up on this channel, not knowing that God was sending me into this platform. Because friends, the way is straight and narrow. And my only desire, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to hurt God. Don't want to hurt Jesus. And so what, what I'm doing here, it cost me everything. And I will go into those details more in another video. But I can assure you, my friends, you got to give up everything to follow Jesus. The real Jesus it's not going to compete with all your dreams and your selfish ambitions for money, for security, for a spouse, for a new house, to maintain all your dreams. The real Jesus, he's not going to compete with you, friends. You got to love him. You got to give it up. You have to give up your life. When I left my salon business and my home, my family thought I lost my mind. I was the first one out of the girls to buy a home. And in their mind, I was successful. I had money, friends. I could go anywhere I wanted. I could travel. I could vacation. I shopped at Saks and Nordstrom's for all my son's clothing, my oldest son. But when I heard that call of the master, I abandoned everything, my credit, everything. And I have lived since that time in 16 different residents. I have laid my head down since, since 2001 when Jesus called me into full-time ministry. I have lived, I've been homeless at least three or four years. Homeless. Living by faith. My ex running from him. Friends, I've been through some deep waters. And what Jesus wanted me to do is to keep exhorting and preaching and challenging everyone that I meet, loving on them, giving them gifts. Even when I didn't have the money, I would give gifts. That's part of my, 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 this is what he gave me as a gift. I'm a giver. When I didn't have no money, I was still giving because this is what Jesus asked me to do. This is what God told me to do. Even in my poverty, I give. Because this is, this is his way. So friends, I want you to know, this is not a game. I didn't just fall off on here and I'm not uploading two, three videos because I don't have anything else to do. This is what Jesus wants with my life. And I will continue by his grace to do everything that I believe he tells me. He is my master. And I'm not ashamed to tell anybody. If you still love this world, you're deceived. You're not going to make it. Jesus requires everything. And your sufferings cannot be compared to eternity. So friends, my testimony is this. Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, who was born of a virgin womb, he died and rose on the third day. Over 500 people witnessed Jesus. That same Jesus saved me, and I love him, and I'm serious about what I'm saying. Eternity is forever, and if you don't have peace, and your mind is racked with all types of what man wants to call mental illness, and you're tormented, friends, I got to tell you what I know. You have not met Jesus. He's a good shepherd. And I plan to serve him until I die. I love you, my friends. God bless you.